Hi everyone, and welcome back to Deck Tech. This week, we're gonna take Jolteon VMAX for a spin, hopefully allowing us to punch big holes in people's boards. So the basic idea is to spread a ton of damage counters around the board, which enables the full effect of Jolteon VMAX's Max Thunder Rumble. This attack costs one lightning and one colorless energy, and it does 100 damage to the active, and 100 damage to a benched Pokemon as long as that Pokemon already has damage counters on it. So the question is, how do we get a ton of damage counters in play? What I did was go back and look at the Roxy engine, which was put to really good use in the Tina Chomp deck that ruled the roost before Dragonite V effectively replaced it. Using Roxy, you can discard up to two Pokemon from your hand, drawing three cards for every Pokemon that you pitched. And if you pitch this particular coughing with Roxy's effect, you can place one damage counter on every opposing Pokemon. This combo ensures that your opponent's entire board becomes vulnerable to Jolteon's attack, and it's really useful for allowing you to hit the numbers required to take KOs with Jolteon, because yeah, you're only doing 100 damage to the active at a time, uh, and sometimes you need that extra 10 or 20 to finish the job. Now, you won't always have access to Roxy or Coughing, so Galarian Zigzagoon is there to shore up your damage counter spread alongside Scoop Up Net. And again, it can really help you fix the math required for Jolteon to take a two-hit KO, especially on things like Zacian V, for example. Two Goonpings or a Goonping and a single Roxy spread alongside two Max Thunder Rumbles will do the job. And yes, it does matter because you have to very carefully plan your KOs with this deck. Now, you can also get use of Roxy without coughing, thanks to the Propagation Execute. You can basically discard this thing infinitely, so you can still get a draw 6 off of Roxy, or just, you know, pitch the Execute whenever you need to use Quick Ball or Ultra Ball for your searching needs, because you can spam Propagation as much as you want, which makes your discards effectively free. And then there's this little Spiritomb, which is mostly here to crush Mad Party, but it can also be used to spread damage counters in a pinch, assuming your opponent has at least a few Pokemon in the discard pile. Taking advantage of our ability to spread damage counters, we have access to this Mimikyu from Cosmic Eclipse, which can be used to shut off enemy GX abilities. This can ruin some decks outright, so make liberal use of it, especially if you happen to be coming up against Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. And then the only other thing we really need to look at is our energy cheating package. Jolteon's attack is really powerful, more so in the long term, but taking two turns to power it up would make it extremely underwhelming. So we need to turn it into a one attachment attack, allowing us to potentially destroy the opponent's board before they can set up. Elemental Badge is your main tool in this case. This reduces the cost of Jolteon VMAX's attack by one colorless energy, but we can also back that up with Tapu Koko Prism Star and Thunder Mountain Prism Star. Between these three cards, we can attack extremely efficiently and run a much smaller physical energy count, which does open up a lot of room in the deck for other cards. Oh, and I guess it is worth mentioning that we run a bit of prize denial as well. Acerola and Scoop Up Cyclone let you effectively take three prizes off the board, and since we can attack with Jolteon VMAX for effectively one attachment, you can reset your position and make your opponent fall even further behind by taking those easy prizes away. And one interaction that I really love, but I have to admit is kind of busted, is that you can scoop up a Jolteon with a Speed Lightning Energy attached to it, and then attach that Speed Lightning Energy to the fresh Jolteon VMAX in order to draw a few more cards. Believe me when I say this deck is fast. It's not explosive in the way that Tina Chomp was, doing 250 damage in one turn, but 200 damage in a turn spread across two Pokemon is nothing to scoff at either. Expanded, like Standard, has a lot of little bench sitters like Garboder, Sudowoodo, Octillery, and of course, very juicy bench sitters like Tapu Lele GX, Crobat V, and Dedenne GX. So, while you might not take a KO every turn, you can set up two, three, four, five, even six prize turns if you play really well with Jolteon. And now that we've got a good idea of how this deck runs, let's take it on over to the expanded ladder and see if we can grind out a few wins. 
All right, so heading into the first of two games, we are gonna come up against what I think is fair to say uh, is in the top three most annoying decks to run up against on the expanded ladder. Um, but fortunately enough, uh, this isn't gonna end in a very early concede for me because at the very least, it's one of the three nasty decks that affords you some counterplay. That said, uh, I'm not gonna be off to a good start. It's always nice to go first, uh, but in this particular case, you know, it's not the greatest starting hand. Um, having Jolteon V to lead with is always good because free retreat can allow me to pivot around if the matchup is not great. But that Jolteon V max in hand is gonna be a bit of a liability, especially because I don't have a draw supporter in hand. And, you know, the ones I have access to, uh, it might require that I discard that Jolteon V max. And in fact, uh, very shortly when my opponent flips over their Pokemon, uh, I am gonna be forced to discard that Jolteon VMAX in order to hopefully survive a little longer. So seeing that I'm up against Ultra Necrozma, Garboder, um, you know, the alarm bells are, are of course going off, I know that I'm not gonna have access to abilities for very long. Um, and with pretty much every Pokemon in this deck, aside from Spiritomb and the Jolteons having an ability and being basic Pokemon, uh, I can be very easily locked out by both Garbotoxin and Silent Lab. So as painful as it was, I did need to discard that Jolteon VMAX off of the Dead A change because I just need to thin my deck out, eliminate every Pokemon with an ability that I can't use right now because they could all potentially turn into dead draws. And Ultra Necrozma Garboder is a deck that, while it does have one very narrow window to, you know, allow you to maybe um, get off the back footing, it's still pretty unforgiving, so I just, I cannot afford, um, you know, to potentially waste the one turn that my opponent will give me uh, to get back in the game. So at the very least here, you know, I'm able to set up well enough. Uh, I can get the attachment. I have both of my execute in the discard pile where they're still somewhat useful. And, you know, I do have a copying in hand and a Roxy in the discard pile. So even if I get ability locked and don't get access to the Roxy ping, I should still be able to draw a couple of extra cards. And the nice thing I can do here as well is I can quickly recover one execute while I still have access to propagation and put it in the active so that if my opponent does have the double dragon energy at the start, sure they're taking a prize, but they're taking a prize on execute which might be able to come back later. And more importantly, they're not setting up a two hit KO on my Jolteons and potentially discarding a very valuable energy in the process. So for my part, I'm just gonna watch what my opponent is doing. Um, they're obviously gonna try and get as many Ultra Necrozmas and Trubbishes in play uh, as they can on the first turn. At the very least, I know they can't get access to Garbotoxin here unless this deck has suddenly started playing Boost Shake. Um, but otherwise, you know, they're just gonna set these up and then assuming they can get the DDE, they can go for the turn one attack. And they do have the N here, which really sucks because I lose access to my elemental badge and uh, an easy out, at least, to Roxy. But I do see a Jolteon VMAX off of the end, which actually ended up being pretty important, uh, considering the fact that Jolteon VMAX is an endangered species in my deck right now. Now, my opponent, they're going to be a little aggressive here, maybe a little too much, and attach the Floatstone early on to that Trubbish. Uh, but the important thing is that they didn't hit the Silent Lab and they didn't hit the DDE. So I have access to abilities for one more turn, and you know, uh, that's one prize at least that they weren't able to take. So you had better believe I'm gonna turbo through things right now and try and establish my game state as best as I can. So what I'm gonna prioritize here is getting off the guaranteed ping with Galarian Zigzagoon. I have access to the scoop up net so I can set up at least two potential KOs here. Um, there's not too much I can do about the Ultra Necrozma in the active unless I hit a field blower but I have no way of knowing for sure that I'll hit one. So I'm instead gonna focus down the Trubbishes. Um, Garbotox and Garboder only has 100 HP as is. So now that there are some damage counters on both Trubbishes, I can basically say, I'm taking your Garbotoxin off the board every turn that I'm able to attack. And you know, my opponent will have access still to Silent Lab. The deck runs, I believe at least four of them. Uh, and you know, there is the potential as well that with Guzmahala, they can access that a little easier. 
But the trade-off is that, you know, if they're using Guzmahala, they're not using a draw supporter, for example, right? So if I can get rid of all of their uh, potential Garboders, then it's a lot harder for them to ability lock me a little bit later on, uh, which was my thinking in that particular case, right? But the other thing is that at least um, thanks to this battle compressor here, I can actually get access to Roxy now and set up the rest of their board uh, for some Max Thunder Rumble devastation. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'll evolve up into my Jolteon, uh, just cause I really need to get one of those in play and I don't wanna get end again. And then I'll use Rescue Stretcher to get back a coughing. I'll use Propagation to get back and execute as well. And then Via Seeker will get me back the Roxy that I need in order to start pinging my opponent. And of course, refresh my hand as well. And as long as I can get a switching option off here, I can at least take out that Trubbish with the Floatstone and deny my opponent one potential Garbotoxin. All right, and lucky me, I do see actually two floatstones off of uh, off of the Roxy, which is really nice. And I get an additional Galarian Zigzagoon, which means that I can ping one more thing if I really want to. Um, it's not gonna matter too much, but I do still think I wanna play this down uh, just because that's more of a dead draw than uh, other cards might be. Like I don't wanna play down the Crobat V necessarily, even though it might draw me a couple extra cards because it is an easy two prizes for my opponent if they can get another Fighting Fury Belt, for example, and maybe a Gust. Um, but also because like, if there's a turn later on where my opponent doesn't ability lock me, Crobat V is more valuable than Galarian Zigzagoon. So, you know, here it's like, well, let me just put it down. If I have access to a couple scoop up nets later on, then like fine, right? I can still make use of that, um, or at least evacuate it from the board easier than the Crobat V as well. And then I'll just go for the attack, get some damage into the active Ultra Necrozma, and take out one of the potential Garboders on the bench as well. Uh, so I'm in a pretty good uh, situation here for the most part. Um, my opponent uh, is finally going to be able to get a hit into Jolteon and take out my Speed Lightning Energy, which kind of sucks. But on the other hand, um, I have an easy two prizes on board. Um, it really is just a question of what I want to take out. And my opponent's gonna go for the research as well. Uh, so obviously the thing I'm hoping they don't get is a floatstone and a follow-up DDE, but there's a pretty good chance by this point since their deck is getting really thin as well. And yeah, there's the floatstone and they're even gonna get a mysterious treasure, I believe to get another, uh, either another Trubbish or another Ultra Necrozma in play. And yeah, there is the Ultra Necrozma. So, you know, that one doesn't have a damage counter on it either, which is gonna matter because if I can't ping it with at least one thing, uh, that is a very unfortunate 2KO that I'm gonna have to take. And looking at the situation here, um, I'm in a pretty rough spot actually. They have ability lock up now, so Crobat is useless and I gotta pitch it. It's never great to pitch the Floatstone either, uh, but what really sucks <laughs> is having to have discarded that Jolteon VMAX earlier on because now I do not have access to the follow-up. Uh, so basically, I can't retreat and then evolve up into another Jolteon VMAX to attack with. Now I do have to, while I can still take two prizes here myself, I have to give my opponent three prizes, which is not great because it puts them that much closer to winning. Now, the only other thing that I can count on here is that they have a lot more ends left in the deck than um, let's say Professor's Research because they don't want to be ending themselves, especially with Ability Lock and stuff like that. Because the Ultra Necrozma deck, it doesn't have a ton of ways to draw extra cards um, outside of things like Lucky Egg and Bicycle, but that kind of requires that they're already in a bad spot and that you're taking KOs. Uh, but you know, for my part, I just wanted to really get the Garboder off of there because, again, if I can take out the Silent Labs, uh, or at least, you know, if my opponent doesn't have access to them every turn, uh, then it's going to take them too long to potentially set up the Ability Lock again. But with teammates, I mean, they can pretty much guarantee their follow-up as well. Uh, and having the Silent Lab there is not, it's not great. Now, one thing I do want to mention is I could have actually um, taken the KO on the Ultra Necrozma the previous turn by playing Field Blower down, but I actually wanted to hold on to it just in case my opponent slapped down the Silent Lab this turn. Um, I had a feeling that even if I got Jolteon off of the prizes, you know, I didn't have any draw supporters in hand, I might need access to something else. Uh, so, you know, while I could have taken the extra prize and maybe put my opponent in a slightly worse spot, it didn't feel worth it to play that down and potentially uh, be stuck in a really awkward situation. 
But you know, here, thankfully off the prizes, I did see the Jolteon VMAX and now I have a Tapu Lele GX in hand as well. And because I kept that field blower, I will be able to play that down and refresh my hand with a draw supporter as necessary. Um, I would have preferred to have to, you know, put down an additional Jolteon V, uh, but there's just not room for it. Um, you know, while I still think it was important to use those Zigzagoons earlier on, it is certainly putting me in an awkward spot with regards to my bench. But on the other hand, I'm actually at the point where I can put my opponent in a pretty sorry spot as well. Um, unless one of the cards they got off of the teammates was a DDE. Um, there's like, there's still a good chance they have it in hand, but I, you know, there's a chance they don't either, or they don't have access to the special charge. Um, the big thing for me here is if I can take two Ultra Necrozmas off the board, they're left with one. And then unless they have the recovery option to follow up with, I am gonna take them for a game pretty easily. Right? Especially because here I do have access to one more Roxy, because I have access to abilities again, I can recover and execute, ping the Ultra Necrozma, and then basically I'm going to be taking my remaining prizes pretty easily. They can't get the KO on me, as long as they don't field blow away my elemental badge, like I'm in a really good spot as well to continuously attack with Jolteon. So, you know, for the most part, um, as long as my opponent doesn't literally get the perfect next turn, or you know, and me out of all my energy, uh, I actually have game stitched up pretty well. And after I go for propagation again, you know, just because I think my opponent realizes uh, they're in a pretty sorry spot and they just end up scooping. All right, and heading into our second and final game of this episode, we are going to come up against one of the slightly less degenerate decks in Expanded, uh, but certainly one that's very, very good at putting the hurt on, uh, well, pretty much everything and very quickly at that. So I'm going to win the coin flip, which is always fantastic. I will lead off with a Jolteon V, which is also great. And while, you know, it's nice to have a ton of energy in hand, um, it's not a lot to work with. Now, seeing the Mew here, um, it could be a couple things. It could be Picarom. Uh, it could be Mad Party, it could be Night March. Uh, there's a lot of decks that like to play this in order to give them a very cheap attacker. Uh, I'm working off the suspicion that it is Mad Party though, because this is expanded um, and people prefer to play Mad Party with Mew than uh, pretty much anything else. So uh, kind of looking at my situation here, I think, all right, well, I've got the one Jolteon V in play. I have access to the Execute. So kind of like I did in the last game, I am going to get that execute back and I'm going to retreat into it um, just so that, you know, if my opponent is going to take a prize, uh, they're just taking a very cheap prize off of execute. And the reason I want to do this is that at least in the early turns, uh, Mad Party really wants to be going for things like Professor's Research or I guess Sycamore or Juniper, depending on what you prefer, uh, because they want to be getting as many of those Mad Partiers into the discard pile as possible, right? Uh, they need quite a few Pokemon in the discard in order to go for the really aggressive uh, Guzma or boss play. So it's less likely that they'll have that on their first turn. Uh, at least that's what I'm banking on. But you know, they do get their attachment off to the Mew and as long as they have access to one Bunnelby on their bench, uh, they will be able to get an attack off regardless. And you know, they did hit the Day Day and now the Crobat. Uh, so there is actually a higher chance now that if they hit a couple of Battle Compressors, they can gust and take out one of my Jolteons. Um, but I still kind of have to hope that that's not going to be the case. And they actually, yep, retreat and go for the Guzma play. So I guess they're feeling pretty good about it. Uh, they'll be able to burn a Trainer's Mail and then throw down the Crobat. Uh, so yeah, if they hit a ton of Battle Compressors, then, you know, there's a good chance they can get the KO here. Um, I was banking on that not being the case, but hey, you know, uh, I was worth the risk. And actually, they don't get that much, uh, so they can only go for the 80 damage. They've got the big sad there. <laughs> um, but you know, for me, uh, I cannot complain. And actually, I do get my Jolteon VMAX off of uh, the Speed Lightning Energy, which is always fantastic. And then I can play down the Trainer's Mail just to see what my options might be here. Um, I am going to take the Battle Compressor because I have Thunder Mountain in play, and at least on their turn, they didn't get their Chaotic Swell up. So I'm feeling pretty good about everything. Now, when seeing this Battle Compressor, the other thing I do is just double check that the Spiritomb is in there, um, because that Spiritomb there is basically going to completely gimp uh, my opponent's setup. 
right? Uh, it's going to force all of their mad partiers back into the deck and spread a ton of damage counters around. But I don't want to drop it just yet. They only had, what, four mad partiers in the discard pile? So it's not super useful to me right now. Uh, they can very easily get those back and more uh, by hitting more battle compressors and, you know, professors research and stuff like that. So what I want to do for now is threaten my opponent's board state. I want to force them to potentially play down a Mr. Mime or a Bench Barrier Mew if they have it. Uh, you know, commit resources to getting that out instead of maybe setting Mad Partiers up. And then once that happens and I have the free bench space to work with, then I can drop the Spirit Tomb and wipe out the Mew in the process, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, along with a couple of attackers. And then at that point, uh, I can bring in a Jolteon VMAX to clean up whatever is left. And the nice thing here, too, against Mad Party is that uh, I can trade pretty efficiently against them as well, because I'm going to be taking two prizes every turn if I can help it. So now they're forced to bring up the Deden AGX, which is never ideal. They're basically forced to have a floatstone or a U-turn board or something to that effect, which again, you know, they're going to have to dig for it. They might have to spend resources in order to get that switching out. Uh, and as predicted, they start using Professor Juniper to burn through their deck. And there is that bench barrier Mew. So I hit them with the well played uh, because, hey, you know, <laughs> if there's one card you're going to put down to scuttle my strategy, that's the one. Because now you're forcing me to take one prize against Mad Party every turn. Um, and if you throw up something like a Marshadow GX, well, that's probably GG for me. Uh, now, the nice thing about having the Thunder Mountain Prism Star out um, was that, you know, my opponent did manage to pick up the Field Blower. So thankfully, uh, I've preserved my Elemental Badges in deck. And, you know, for them, they don't have that great of a turn either because they were forced to dig for the Mew and set up a little bit more. Um, they have to leave that to Dene trapped in the active. And for my part, uh, you know, it's just a question of thinning things out and giving myself access to the more valuable uh, cards uh, in my deck here. So I am going to toss the end because obviously it's becoming less and less useful to me uh, over the course of the game. I certainly don't want to be ending myself down to four. But I'm also just going to pitch the uh, Roxy there because I want to have easier access to it off of you know, a versus seeker. Uh, now I'm going to go for the quick ball as well here, because obviously I really need to have access to that spirit tomb and I need it pretty quickly. Um, because you know, that bench barrier Mew is just going to be, uh, the end for me. So I'm going to grab the spirit tomb. And the nice thing about speed lightning energy is that while it doesn't give you the effect off of attaching it, it is still a colorless energy attachment. And my opponent sees that it's just going to scoop immediately. Okay, and there were two very satisfying games with Jolteon VMAX. I don't know about you guys, but I personally despise Ultra Necrozma and Garboder decks. Uh, they've ruined plenty of win streaks for me, and I'm sure they've done the same to you too. So it's always nice to be able to take a W against them. And you know, as for the Mad Party game, well, uh, this is a perfect example of why you need to tech in Expanded. The appearance of that Bench Barrier Mew could have really scuttled my Jolteon's damage and basically put me onto the back foot for the rest of the game. But being able to wipe that off the board as well as totally reset my opponent's entire Mad Party engine, uh, well, that's a little busted. Um, but you know, um, it's a good example too of why that Spear Tomb is useful in general. You could actually use it outside of the Mad Party matchup because, you know, between Roxy, Zigzagoon, and that Spear Tomb, there's a good chance you could actually clear out a Mew or a Mr. Mime, assuming you have the turn to spare, because, you know, a lot of decks are going to turbo through anyways and put a couple of Pokemon in the discard pile, meaning that, yeah, you can get that out of the way and just go right back to punching holes in the opponent's board. But anyway, that's the deck. Uh, it's certainly not solved by any means, but, you know, I think it is a really fun framework and inroad for this deck in Expanded. And, you know, it is really nice for anybody who wants to play uh, a different game than just blowing up whatever is in the active. Uh, it's nice, especially if you want to have a longer game, I think at least. And hey, if you've enjoyed the video, then flick that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be back in a few days with another expanded deck profile, this time taking a look at the new Inteleon VMAX from Fusion Strike, and how the bloody amphibian just will not give up any prizes. So, until then guys, and as always, 
Take it easy.